What's up fellas? In this video we are diving into what's on my Mac. I'm going to share with you all of the apps, games and virtual machine I use to stay productive, entertained and connected. Whether you are looking for a new software or you want to find out what an experienced Mac user keeps on their machine, you are in the right place. So without further ado, let's get started. I don't like wasting people's time, so let's go straight to the topic of this video. This is my Mac user interface. As you can see at the bottom I have my dock and I have some empty spaces. These empty spaces allow me to categorize apps by topic and create a little bit of order in my dock, since most of the apps I'm using are situated in the dock. If you want to have the same invisible icons in your dock, I made a separate video on that topic and I will leave a link in the description of this video so you can check it out. So what else do I have on my desktop? I have a bunch of widgets, some basic stuff like batteries, HomeKit controls, calendars, sunset, sunrise and a new app I'm testing currently is called Rise. The Rise app allows me to find a perfect time to go to bed and sleep better. I am not a big fan of iOS widgets on macOS just because it's kind of cluttering the interface and I like to keep things pretty simple. Now let's talk about the menu bar. I have quite a lot of different items here. As you can see I have some basic stats for my Mac. The app is called iStats Menu. It allows me to see my current CPU, GPU load as well as disk occupation status, some battery percentage levels etc etc. This app is highly customizable and you can add as many different stats as you want. I have so many items in the menu bar that I physically don't have enough space and I'm using the app called the Bartender 5. It allows me to extend my menu bar and have this kind of virtual menu bar extension. Inside my menu bar extension I have a bunch of other apps like my clipboard manager, of course, I will not be talking about every element because the video would take ages to make. I will maybe highlight the uh, most interesting object here. As you can see, I have a little green text written, time is money. The app is called One Thing and it does literally only one thing. You can write an important text or name right in the menu bar. In my case, time is money. Every time I'm using my Mac, I constantly see this phrase, time is money, and it motivates me to keep going. Okay, so of course, the main topic of this video are apps that I'm using on my Mac. I have quite a lot of them. Let's start by some standard apps that I put in the folder Apple. These are standard Apple apps. These are pretty boring, of course, everyone has them, like messages, notes, weather, app store. The second folder is Apple services. These are apps related to macOS, like font books, uh, stocks, dictionary, uh, Siri. I decided to keep them in a separate folder. So next folder is video. As you might notice, I'm making YouTube videos, so obviously I have quite a lot of different apps related to video editing. My main video editing tool is Final Cut Pro. My secondary video editing tool is CapCut. I'm using it mostly to create captions. I also have the Captionator app, um, but I stopped using it because it's kind of sucks. I have Motion, CleanShot 10 and ScreenFlow I use to capture video, uh, to capture the screen of my Mac. 4K Video Downloader Plus, it allows me to download videos from YouTube. VLC, Cursor Pro, this app is used to highlight the cursor on my Mac. Compressor and 4K YouTube to MP3. It allows me to download music from YouTube. Of course, the most important app for me is Final Cut Pro. I'm spending 99% of time using this app. I think I paid it like 300 bucks five or six years ago. It was definitely a nice investment. Next folder on my Mac contains my audio apps. I have only three of them. The Logic Pro app allows me to create music. I used to make my own music not really right now. Elgato Wavelink, this is the software I'm using with my microphone and my audio interface Elgato Wave and the music app obviously to listen to music, Apple Music. Next category is graphics and design. I have only two apps, Adobe Photoshop 2024 and Pixelmator Pro. 
I'm using Photoshop exclusively to create my YouTube thumbnails. Besides that, I'm not doing any graphics or design. Next folder on my Mac is called Utilities. The most interesting app here is Tempbox. This is a free app that allows you to create a sort of disposable email address. I'm using this disposable email address app on some weird websites when they're asking my private data and obviously I don't want to share my private data. So this app comes pretty handy. I will leave a link in the description of this video so you can download this app and use it on your Mac. The Temp Box app is completely free. Enjoy! Next folder is called Productivity. Recently I added a new app to my list of productivity apps and it's called the Magic Menu Lite. It's a free tool and you can download it in the Mac App Store. This app is designed to customize and enhance the right-click context menu on Mac. Thanks to this app, you can have the same right-click menu similar to what we have on Windows. Create new file, cut files, move files, etc. The Magic Menu app allows you to add new functionalities directly to the right-click control panel, accessible with a simple right-click on your mouse or trackpad. The right-click booster can add local folders, network drives and external drives to your Mac to enable a more efficient file transferring. So let me show you how it works on my Mac. Right click on the empty space and in the context window you can see new file. So I can create any new file in this location. For example, let's create a new pages file. And it works! It opens a new pages file. Let's try something different. For example, Let's create a new PowerPoint document. I have no idea why macOS does not have this feature by default, but thanks to the magic menu, you can create new files in any location you want. You know, sometimes small things can make a huge difference. And honestly, when I started to use the magic menu app on my Mac, it made my life much easier. So this was the first feature of this app, but there is more. You can copy or move files into different locations. For example, let's move this file to my test location. Or better, let's copy it. Let's copy this file to my test location that I already made. As you can see, the file was copied in just a few seconds. It's much faster than copying and pasting files manually, especially when the target location is hidden somewhere in different folders. Instead of copying this file, we can also try to move it to my target location. Moving the file will delete it from its original location. So right click on it, move to and select the target location. In my case, it's my test folder. It's super easy to do. Boom, and the file is moved. So as you can see, it disappeared in its original location. You can of course customize your destinations and add your most used places. I absolutely love this app and it's empowering my workflow on my Mac. Knowing that this is a free app, there is really zero reason not to give it a try. I will leave a link in the description of this video so you can download it and try it on your Mac as well. By the way, I made a separate video about my best productivity apps for Mac. I will not be talking about all of my productivity apps in this video, otherwise the video would last ages, so check it out if you're interested. The video link will be in the description. Now let's talk about the Office apps. I have quite a few of them, of course, some standard apps like Pages, Numbers, Keynote, Microsoft Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel, Teams. These are pretty standard apps and everyone knows them. Next, app category on my Mac is called Disk Utilities. Probably the most interesting app in this category is called Blackmagic Speed Test. This app allows you to test the speed of your drive, internal drive or external drive. As you can see, the read and write speed on my Mac is pretty high. Okay, let's continue the video and the next category of apps is called Other. Other means everything that I was not able to fit into any of previous categories like Send to Kindle, App Bilingual European Translator, Deepool, um, Coconut Battery, Google Translate, Clack and Haze Over. I will talk a little bit more about some of these apps. For example, Coconut Battery allows you to see the full charge capacity and design capacity. 
The Coconut Battery app allows you to find the manufacture date of your battery. You can see the full amount of charging cycles. As you can see in my case, it's just 155 charging cycles for 804 days of usage. I'm using almost all the time my MacBook plugged into a power source. I can even see the history of previous devices I used to connect to my Mac, like my iPhone 12 Pro Max or my iPhone SE. As you can see, for example, my MacBook Pro battery life significantly dropped since August 2023. Now it's at 86% for 155 charging cycles. The Coconut Battery app is completely free. I will leave a link in the description of this video. It can give you really in-depth view of your battery health, both on your Mac and iPhone. Next app I would like to show you is called Clack. Now this app is paid. I guess I paid like 10 bucks and it allows you to simulate or emulate the mechanical keyboard switches on your MacBook keyboard. So basically what it does, it just makes a mechanical keyboard sound when you type using your MacBook keyboard. Listen to that. When I bought this app, I thought that it would be kind of stupid to emulate mechanical keyboard switches, but finally I'm really enjoying using this app because it creates this vintage vibe and when you're typing on your Mac, it's much more pleasant experience, let's say. Next app I recently bought on the Mac App Store is called Haze Over. The Haze Over app allows you to stay concentrated while working in a specific app. It's kind of difficult to explain, I just have to show you. When you open this app, you will see a virtual switch that will allow you to dim the background image and different windows as well. So that way you can stay concentrated into one app. For example, in this case, I'm working my terminal. It's just an example, of course. You can adjust the concentration level from zero to 100%. 100 goes completely black. You will see only one window. I mean, this app can be useful for writers. For example, you can dim the background and stay concentrated on your document, but you can also go to the full screen mode. I'm not sure it's the most useful app I ever tried, but I just wanted to show you. So let's continue with next category called Internet. Obviously here I keep all apps related to Internet usage like Google Chrome, Adblock, a bunch of old Safari extensions that I'm not using much, Speedtest, Auto HD FPS for YouTube. Now this is an interesting Safari extension because it automatically adjusts the video quality by default on YouTube videos. The idea behind this Safari extension is to automatically set the highest image quality for YouTube videos. So you don't have to manually adjust the video quality every time you want to watch a video. So this would be everything for the internet apps. Now let's move to the games category. I have a lot of games on my Mac. For example, Populous Run, GTA San Andreas, SnowRunner, Resident Evil, Mad Max, Monopoly, Metro, Farming Simulator, Scania Truck Simulator, Inside, or Sudden Strike. I also have Boosteroid Cloud Gaming that I'm using from time to time. I'm not a huge gamer, but I like to play games when I'm traveling or when I have some free time. I would like a separate video about my macOS games. It's a nice topic for a separate video. Next folder is called Virtual Machines and I have two apps related to virtualization. The first app is called Parallels Desktop. It's a paid app, I guess like 100 bucks per year. It allows you to create a virtual image of Windows, Windows 11. The biggest advantage of this app is the ability to run Windows apps right on your Mac. So you have this kind of virtual Windows PC stored inside your Mac computer. You can run it anytime and play Windows games, run specific Windows software. This app is a little bit expensive, but it's really good. If you don't have money, there is a free alternative app called UTM. This app allows you to create a virtual image of Windows 11 
or any other system, I made a separate tutorial video about the UTM app and how to install Windows 11 for free on your Mac. So as you can see, I have another Windows 11 virtual PC inside my Mac. I can run any Windows specific software. I can even play some games. Unfortunately, the UTM app does not have graphical acceleration, so opening apps can feel a little bit slow. Unfortunately, with UTM, you will not be able to run Windows game on Mac because it does not have this graphical acceleration, so it's mostly made for running software. But the advantage is completely free. A lot of people from my previous tutorial on UTM app are asking me about the internet, how to get internet inside this virtual machine, so it's pretty easy. Go to settings, network, network mode, shared network, Okay, select this one. Emulated network card, Virtual Net PCI. Select this one. Now you may need to restart your virtual machine or your computer to apply settings, but normally it should work. Next folder is called PDF. These are some boring PDF apps. Maybe the most interesting one is PDF Expert. PDF Expert is a very advanced PDF editing tool it allows you to highlight and modify different PDF documents. For example, you can highlight different text elements. You can add different stamps like approved or declined. This is basically a very advanced PDF editing tool. And finally, the last folder is called AI. I have three AI apps. Probably the most interesting one is called Mac Bing. Bing is a free search engine powered by ChatGPT. You can access this search engine right in the menu bar. Just type your request and you will get the answer right in the menu bar. Pretty handy app. The last app in my selection is called Invisibility, but this is a topic for a separate video. Guys, thank you for watching this video until the end. If you like this kind of videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my other videos on my channel as well. See you later on YouTube. Bye bye.